Hey, what's up, Liron here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint a sheep in quite a realistic manner. This is great for two things. One, if you want to learn how to improve your ability to paint animals and wool and fur and all these kinds of textures. And two, if you want to improve your ability to portray colors um, and values more realistically based on an old, rather old live stream. Now, cut out all the fluff. It's just a process. Let's get to it. Here we have a sheep really close up the face and you can see the reference photo right here. Beautiful, beautiful one. And lastly, we'll paint something that's more of a scene, right? So we'll do this one. And here's our reference for that. I also have a black and white version um, just in case we'll need to reference it and we probably will. Let's do something fun. Let's start from the background here, paint around the sheep and then move on to the main thing. Before that, I may do one quick thing, and that is I may establish some of the uh, paint of the highlight over on the face, okay? I can really get a lot done by using kind of um, neutralized paints because that's what you would often see in real life, okay? Uh, now, I do feel like this should be a little warmer, so I will add a bit of red to it, and we're ready to go. Let me just get this kind of a layer of highlights out of the way. So I'm literally painting the highlights. And uh, you know me, that's not something I often do. I'll often start a different way or paint kind of an initial wash covering everything. But I think for this one, it makes sense for me. So let's get the highlights kind of out of the way. And you can be a little sloppy here because we'll cover it with a darker wash. And I've talked about this in a recent video, you know, uh, what's the point of doing an initial wash? And there is a point to it, but in some scenes, for some scenes, uh, I actually feel really good about kind of painting the highlights, even if it's a little sloppy. Uh, I find that it does end up looking pretty good. Now, some of these highlights you'll notice are white. In the middle of this yellow, you actually have white, and that's what gives it the feeling of warmth, just the yellow around. But the epicenter of the uh, highlight is white. Uh, and that's something you want to have in mind when you're kind of calculating the value. So I'm just starting with kind of a purpley bluish wash here. Um, I, I actually could go with a bit more of a yellow or golden. Let's let's neutralize this just a bit and see just that we don't get to uh, overwork land here, right? And as we get here, we're going to start darkening. Look at the angle I have here. I use my larger tape rather than this uh, smaller one because I really need to make sure nothing dries on me and then I'm gonna switch to this nice muted uh, green mixture it may appear super dark but remember this is gonna dry much lighter so here we go like that and hopefully that will give us I'm gonna mute it just a bit with a bit more red two reds I have your perlin red and pyro scarlet I'm just gonna use both interchangeably kind of like this and should I go lighter? Probably a bit. Let's go a little lighter here. And we'll see if we got it a little too dark. That's fine. But this wash is, the layer is super wet. So uh, you may be surprised at just how light this one dries, right? And then let us uh, mix. Well, it's probably not going to dry as light. Let's go like this. Just add a bit of water to it, but it's fine. Uh, I don't mind pushing the contrast actually in some areas here. And I'm not gonna touch it anymore because um, I'm afraid that if I will, it may create background. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe a little too dark, but that's fine. Um, it's nothing too crucial that will, you know, ruin the painting or anything like that. And now we're gonna switch to a lighter kind of warmer green. Right now, the key here is, again, in addition to getting the values accurately and getting all of that, that stuff, and I'm going to switch to more yellow, I think. The key here is to keep the wash going, right? That's the most important part here. Uh, the edges here got I kind of messed them up, but that's fine. It's going to be relatively um, abstract there below the, at the chin. But again, the, the idea here is, and I do have a bit of kind of slippage here. Let, let me get back some of this. Yeah. So the idea here is just to get um, a, a wash that's even and flows as much as possible. Now let me dry this real fast with the hairdryer so I don't get any weird backgrounds. And we'll continue just one second. 
So this is what happens when you get a little too excited too soon. Uh, I got this a little too dark as you can see, but that's fine. It's actually not gonna hurt the impression too much here. And I will try to be more careful for the next washes. Uh, now we're gonna start working on the face and the body. This is one wash, okay? No need to complicate it. This is actually just one wash all the way top to bottom, right to left, kind of diagonal, I think. Like so I'm mixing this. Let's neutralize it with a bit of what I have on the other wells. Uh, and let's test it out. I forgot to use the test paper earlier. So that's a bit too green. So how will we neutralize the green? We'll use a bit of red. Let's see what we get here. And then maybe a bit of French. I'm just trying a few combinations to see what will work. So this looks a little more similar. So I'm going to work with that. We'll see how it goes, right? And we may need to... I don't know how it'll work in terms of value because the background's a little darker. So we may have to compensate for it. And we may not. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Now, one tip I can give you already for the fur is uh, most of the magic will be in the edges. So if you can get a varied edge that kind of hints at a texture, that's how you're going to convey the fur. Not by actually painting each and every blade of hair or whatever it is, right? So you want to avoid painting each and every detail. Uh, you see, that can be too much. I'm going to stick to the blue sections for now. I'm going to skip anything else because I really want to make sure that I get a relatively even wash. This is all in the shadow, but here you get to see a bit of the texture showing through. And I'll try avoiding, again, the land of overwork here. And kind of try like this. And what's interesting is this is a bit blurry too, like we actually get a soft edge here. So let's try it out. And this is a great example of a process where you're like, you're looking at it and there's a lot of uncertainty. Think to yourself, will it work? Will it not work? Uh, it looks strange, uh, but bear with me and bear with the process and you will be surprised at the kinds of results you can achieve. Okay, so a big part of it is trusting the process. So please try. I know it can be hard. Uh, so I'm going to try and work as fast as I can. In fact, I'm going to start. Let's do a bit of dual action here. I'm going to start. This is all in the shadow. So let's just cover it up and kind of make sure this we don't lose this edge. And then we'll go like this to keep it wet and we'll continue down here. So sometimes you need to have a, uh, you need to be ambidextrous for these things. Uh, and I'm kidding, but yeah, I'm going to switch between the two probably more in the next stages. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it will make sense in the end. And if not, you know, we tried, uh, but hopefully it will. See now, when the blue is fresh out of the tube and it's so strong, it's very easy to get too much of it. So I'm trying to avoid that. And I'm also trying to, again, work fast enough so that no critical, crucial parts uh, of the wash dry. You'll notice I kind of dipped uh, into red, so I have to be careful not to touch that. And here it gets a little warmer, believe it or not, near the bottom. So let's warm it up. We have some reflected light from the scene. And we can actually use this mix to get it a little warmer. And then continue. My priority here is the flow, right? So I'll make sure that I maintain as much of that flow as possible before it dries. Now, is it too dark? I don't think so. I'm, I'm kind of, we'll have to look at it and consider it. Uh, and by the way, it may look funny because again, we still haven't established the dark. So once we do it, we'll put a lot of things in the right spots, but hopefully it starts to create some kind of an illusion, right? There, it looks like something resembling of a sheep. Uh, now, if we switch over to a smaller brush and I'll use that to kind of bring out some of the details here. Uh, like that, just a bit. I, I'm not sure exactly like what I'm doing. I'm just kind of looking at it and putting what I see. So I see a bit of greenish kind of. Oops, that's way too much. That's a problem with fresh paint out of the tube. But I see a bit of greenish here in the eye, in the shadowy part. So let's get that in. And there is a bit of a dark bit in it. Believe it or not, I'm reaching for the black just to save some time on mixing. Uh, it's, it's It really is a neutral black, so I can use it, it's fine. And a bit of shadow between the kind of, I don't know, eyelashes or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of kind of abstraction here, so it's not the easiest um, 
not the easiest type of reference to paint, but let's see if we can uh, get it to look good. I'm gonna, while this is still wet or damp, I'm gonna put in those details, you see? Kind of a smile, smiley face, and don't worry, there's a bit more work to do, like in a larger scheme, darkening some spots. We're not done with this, right? Uh, but for now, we're close to finishing at least with this wash. Um, so I think we'll let it dry. So here, here's what I'm seeing. Bottom, a bit more shadowy, so we can darken that section. Uh, this section here is a little darker, and we'll combine it with fixing this shape, which I didn't get perfectly. Uh, and we'll darken some spots here and there in the ear. So let's let's jump to it. Uh, this is kind of a rendering stage, so it's a bit hard sometimes to explain exactly how I'm doing what I'm doing, but you'll see, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna just paint here and try observing what I do both on paper and on the palette. Okay, so I'm gonna blend that a bit here, like that, just to get this a bit more of an ambiguous transition. This here should be darker, right? And you can see it in the reference photo that will kind of adjust the shape of the face, right? To show the curves of it, show the cheekbone here, I suppose. Um, I'm not yet an expert in sheep anatomy, but I can kind of guess or something like that and the most important part smoothing out the edges here okay uh, i may need to do another round of smoothing that's fine here as well but that gives you a bit of that shape now i do see this is a little too dark too low so let's get rid of that kind of like this that's it um, and i can go even a little bit darker here I'm just grabbing random things I have on the palette. Sometimes I do it that way. Now, we have a bit of a shadow here. So let's just put that in. If we want to blend it, we can always just go like spritz. And it will help it move a bit. Uh, we have a bit of a shadow, which brush I wanted this one, uh, inside the face, the face, the ear. So let's get it here like that. That highlight is a little too big. But you see, I'm literally, you can compare the two and see, right? And where, where this is. And you can just use kind of a um, dry brush effect to do this. You can, there are plenty of ways of achieving these effects. Uh, what I recognize is definitely that it needs a little more warmth, a little more red here. Um, so we'll do this, like that. Um, and so here's what we can do here. We can pre-wet and get this wet and wet, but I'm scared to do it, so I'm just gonna put them in. Maybe that's a little too red for this much of an edge kind of a thing. So what we can do is put some of these details in and then come back and just blend one of their edges, which is the furry kind of part, right? Um, Let's see if I can get it to look right. It's it's a bit complex and I would sometimes not do it or do it wet and wet or not do it at all if I miss the chance. Uh, but let's try, let's try. Just a few of the details here. I'm definitely not a master at it and kind of want to play around with it a bit and see what, what will be created here. I, I won't normally do it this way, right? This is way too risky, but uh, why not try and get the shapes like where you see them? I'm gonna use my fingers to smear this around a bit use this to kind of blend some of these you see so you kind of get it even if from afar right uh, now let me try another important part here i'm gonna blend this edge right like this you see it's a bit more blended there uh, and let's see what we can do here so i'm gonna just try and darken this a bit while bringing out the shape of the face you see there's this very gentle curve right here oh i was scared i was muted for a moment i was like am i muted this whole time but no and let me actually flip this one upside down and do this blend a bit of the edge here now i don't know why the paint is really reactive the under layer is really reactive for some reason which is it surprised me i don't usually experience it that so what i mean is i put i, I put a touch of paint and then it reactivates what's underneath which usually doesn't happen to this extent what we can do now is continue adding and improving or we can stop at some point so we'll probably do just a bit more and then stop i don't want to overdo it 
this here, the blue creeps into the ear. Um, this goes a little higher and there's a bit of a shadow inside the eye. Um, this here should be a little bluer and slightly darker. We have a guest. That's not a surprise, by the way, that I promised. Chew you. Chew you. So if you look at this, there's a lot of a variety. Again, the shallow depth really causes a lot of this to be blurry, right? Uh, so I will blend some of that. Be blended. And I'll try not to ruin anything while I'm doing this, right? Because it is possible. And here also. All of this is kind of outside the focus, right? So just to get a bit of a, you see, smoother edge there will come a long way. Let me switch over to the face camera. And if I hold it from afar enough, you see it? There's a similarity. So we kind of got it right. Even the colors are pretty much in the ballpark, right? Uh, Max says, why don't you smooth out the lips? They seem very hard. Um, yeah, because uh, you're right, because you're right and I should, let's do this. So here we go, just to blend them out a bit. And yes, you are at risk of lifting, which I did here. I added a bit of a lift there. Let me fix that. Um, yeah, it's a little dangerous. It's danger zone what we're doing right now. Okay, so just be mindful of that. And I think that's maybe a little more blurry. Yeah. And now we'll do a scene. Okay. Now here is the main idea why I want to show you this too. Uh, and we'll give it a go. So for this process, because it's a larger scene, you have to kind of do an initial wash. To me, at least it'll be hard to handle everything right out the gate. So what I'm going to do is uh, a first wash that's a layer of, and look at the, the values here. It's a layer of the sky and then the ground and skipping the highlights. Okay. Um, let's, let's see here. I'm going to just take a bit of everything I got here. You could do this step wet and wet too. Uh, for these scenes, I prefer not to usually. So here we go. It's pretty, a pretty light background. I'm actually going to add some water on top and help it move. And then as we get almost towards the ground, I'll start incorporating a bit of a darker green. But I'm going to switch blues and we'll use the manganese because I want this to be a bit of a brighter green. And let's see what it looks like here. Okay, that looks good. And I love how the sky will blend a bit into it. In fact, let me change the angle so that it does blend, but a bit less. Only for this section, I'll later on uh, bring back the strong angle because I'll need it. Um, and it's okay to just hold it like this and control it manually yourself. And here's the direct light seeping in. Let me... It's really annoying. Like of all hours, it's this time always. Um, now more water. The ground needs to be darker than the sky, but I also am planning on getting an even wash, right? So I'm going to stop at the highlights on the sheep. See here? Like that. I'll use this as a, what I call a stop point. And we'll start. Uh, should we darken a bit? No, I think we're good. We'll mix a bit more. Two blues this time, French ultramarine and this one. I don't know why. More yellow. And just darken it a bit, I think, here and help the wash move, right? Hopefully I won't be able to go over this one again because I, I hate going over these large washes again. Um, so we'll see if I can get it right the first time, which I usually don't with greens and fields and stuff like that, but we'll do our best. So now I'm, I'm basically gonna cover everything but the highlights. So let me yellow it up just a bit and try and get this as accurately as I can, okay? You will inevitably cover some highlights and that's fine. Uh, but do your best. And don't worry about this small unevenness. No one will notice and there's there's so much more to add here. So it's gonna be fine. And here, around. Leave this small highlight here, small highlight here, small highlight there. And keep adding water, paint to the mix. Make sure it keeps moving. I can actually go over the sheep here again. 
and just leave a few hints of highlights, right? Like this. It's even better if I do, because then I make sure that I also paint the floor between the where their their legs are placed, right? Like this, and keep moving that wash as best as you can, right? Use water if you have to. And once you get out of the critical area of where it's really kind of a danger zone, right? Uh, that you, you have to paint around so many highlights and it's very hard to get it right. Once you get to the more open area, it should get a little easier. And let's leave the highlight here for the tail that I put in. Uh, I find that my brushwork gets much sloppier when I talk, so my apologies. It's something I need to improve at. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely something I need to improve at. Um, this is going to be a little patchy, so let's do this. Kind of a loose pre-wetting, because I really would like to not go over this wash and darken it further. And have to darken it further later on. I really would rather not have to do that. And as we get closer, you see there's a bit of flowers, there's a bit of stuff. I'm kind of averaging it out into greens and uh, blues. Greens and yellows. Paint around this one. So this sheep is closest to us, so it's actually a little more important. Uh, I do need a bit more darkness here. You see how fast and furious I have to work on this wash? That's just the nature of these types of... Did I say watch? I meant wash. Um, that's just the nature of these scenes. Let's get a bit of a French ultramarine in there. Just for some spots. To get a bit of a variety and the color we mix. And we can go on top like that. Leave the highlight, right? Leave the highlight on the ear, connect here, get a bit of yellow maybe to kind of wrap up this corner. And hopefully we got somewhat of a decent first wash. Yeah, good. And don't worry about, you know, some shapes here are separate, that's fine. What will unify them is actually later on the shadows. There's a lot to add here, so don't don't worry yourself too much if things don't look right. And this wash, by the way, has no red in it whatsoever. But we will start including red in the next wash. So this will be our kind of first stage. There we go. And yeah, I think that's good. So let's see here what we got for now. So that's pretty green. Let's add a bit more red. And that's a nice value. I like how Joseph's book, which does the trees, meadows, stuff like that, um, does them very, very atmospheric and very much reading the overall atmosphere of the scene and basing it off of that, uh, which is a huge skill. It's very hard to mix proper grays, but this is good. This is perfect. I added a bit of that manganese blue too. And I'm just going to put it in as fast, loose as I can. I don't want to overwork this part, okay? I'm going to use all the means at my disposal with this awesome brush that has a, an awesome texture. And if you use it to the side like this, you can get so much of a variety in. And we'll get this tree in here. We'll darken it a bit near the center. Like that. And... Because we went for a, a first wash that was so um, so saturated and colorful, we can actually afford this wash to be a little more muted in the shadows. And I like that kind of dynamic of a first wash that's fairly colorful and then a shadow wash that's a little more uh, muted and gray and unified, really. It gives it kind of a unifying factor, really. And we'll get to the tree trunk here. So we're playing off of the values in a way that's different from the reference photo, right? We're putting that tree in a little lighter than it actually is so that we can uh, use that. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. 
so we can use that uh, to create a sense of depth, okay? New brush means you need to mix new color. That's just how it goes sometimes. More blue, more yellow, get it neutralized, and here we go. This is a little too light. Let's get it here to the side. Sorry that I can't always verbalize what I'm doing. It's just so much, uh, but I'm doing my best to explain as much as I can from the process. Now, the only thing that matters here to me is to really connect uh, this tree trunk to at least some of the sheep around it. And look at how I'm just putting this small shape and boom, it lights up, right? You get the sense of light and shadow immediately. And by the way, I forgot to add, but you can do like a couple of stray branches or stuff like that if you just want to add a bit more interest to it. And we're working our way around the highlights. The highlights, again, the epicenter of them is uh, white sometimes. When sometimes it's a little yellow or warm or cool. In this example, I could have actually gone with a more uh, colorful highlight rather than just leaving it paper white. Uh, but I'm actually happy I left the paper white. It, it helps in terms of simplicity and it actually looks good, I think. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm merging a bunch of these sheep together. They're all one big shape. And the only thing that matters is that big shape and a few legs indicated here and there. And the, the viewer's mind will kind of complete the rest of the details. If you're doing a decent enough of a job, right? It's not as easy always. <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. But here we go. The closer one will tell the story of the ones in the background. That's usually how it works. Now, I'll actually, maybe I'll use my reference here. It's a little easier for me to see. Yeah, that's better. This one here to the right. So you can take your time, but the one thing you want to pay attention to is, especially for the groups that are merged together, you don't want to take too much time, right? You want to get them to flow together too. And I love that there's a bit of a shadow on the ground and I can get that with a bit of a dry brush. And I, I will go really fast through this process. So ears, <laughs> so apologies. I'm not going to stop for many questions for this one in particular. Sorry about that. Um, I want to kind of wrap the process up and then we can do some Q&A, right? Uh, so now as we move to the side here, these feel a little warmer. So I'm switching off to a warmer color and Hopefully the highlights together with the shadowy part will work together to make this look like the actual subject here. Like this, the butt. Mm, another leg showing through. Um, Again, you can get some shadow in if you want to. I can add that later on too. It doesn't have to really merge together. But let's continue. Let's make our way through. Now, the light here is a bit annoying right now because you see a bit of a weird reflection on it. So my apologies about that. Um, it's just that time of day. What I want to do now is mix a bit of a larger, uh, larger pool here so that I can work with it for a longer period of time and cover more of the sheep. So I'll just do that and I think that's a good one and you can vary it as you uh, as you move along so here we go but you see I'm still not going that dark because it's quite in the background and I already made the tree much lighter right so I want to preserve that kind of a value scheme if you will this is a sheep a bunch of them you could use another smaller brush just to get some of the legs in a little more. Gotta wet it. Just to get a few of the legs indicated maybe a little more accurately. Because it will be, oops, that's, ah, thought it would be easier, ended up being a mess, but yeah. I'll return to it in just a second. And the overlap of light and shadow will really do the job for us. So you don't need to do much. Here we go. See, that's better. Bunch of legs. They're all mixed together because we're looking at them from the side. Or I mean, from the front, but they're all kind of overlapping behind uh, one another. So yeah, here we go. This one I don't even need to darken too much. It's kind of 
I'm gonna do the job for me. We have one that's a little closer here. Let's get this this one's legs a little clearer. They have this nice gesture going like this, like that. Ideally, you'll stop and do all of these slowly, but it's gonna take a long, long time. So let's get this one here a little closer. We'll leave that highlight on the tail, that's cute. And get those legs as accurately as you can. And you see this will read a little better. Now for the ones that are closer, sorry for the ambulance noise, for the ones that are closer, you can take it one more step and, and do some wet and wet to darken some spots. So you can go like this, right? If you see a dark spot, just darken it. And that will give it further uh, depth. It's actually a bit hard to see uh, in the camera, but you see how it does make a difference. Uh, so that's something you may want to try. Now here, as we get closer, yes, we, we do see more individual details. So I'm going to take my time a bit more which, with every one of them. Uh, like this and they're separate as well and then I can use my smaller brush again for the smaller more nuanced details maybe the head or ear or something like that let's go a little warmer still we can go a little warmer with this one that's a nice color and notice how I didn't blend any edge um, you could and maybe you even should uh, it was just too much to think about, but for the again for the closer ones, um, which one? Let's use the same one. Uh, it's just the right size. For the closer ones, you can start thinking about these edges of the shapes, right? And you can start maybe blending them in. And this wash will always be the most time-consuming, the most like the slowest one where you have to really think about it. Uh, that's just how it is. Go warmer. Uh, but you see how slowly but surely the image is built, okay? And in these types of situations, I love to get the entire area covered and then do the uh, wet and wet for the darker details as I've shown you. So like here, anywhere that's a little more shadowy, I'll do that now while trying not to overwork it, you know, and then maybe we can get this kind of a shadow here. Um, but you see that the image starts to be built that way. Now for the ones at the back, we can go a little faster. And I forgot, but I did want to blend uh, here as well. This one and these two also. Like that. Uh, this blending will provide a bit of variety. And in and, and this one, we really have to make sure we get some of it in. Uh, so here we go. Very few left. Um, and then we'll move on to the next one, to the closest one. Leaving that highlight for the tail. And we're really close to finishing this one. We really do. Uh, get close to it now. A bit darker here. And smoothen out the edge. Green tail. <laughs> this sheep has a green tail. That's fun. And now for the most important one. You can even work with a bit of a larger brush for this. Uh, this one's warmer. So let's get a bit of that. Let's try to vary the temperature here a bit. So we'll start a bit warm. Like so. Good. And before I move forward, I'll blend the edge. But if I don't do it now, it's going to be hard to do later on this and maybe in some areas around the neck and then we'll slowly cool the mix of it very slowly 
that with this leg going here and for this one I will get the legs in accurately because here we can really see the shapes so it's more important as well as well this is a little darker Oops. and we'll get that other side of that leg here and for the shadow you can either again do this kind of a dry brush we'll give it a try something like this and then I would also like to darken some spots of course so maybe around here around here around the face under the ear under the tail and yeah I think that tells the story oh I forgot this one <laughs> completely forgot this one um, so here we go this one's faster it's funny how sometimes when you go through these faster you end up getting a better result sometimes faster is really just better you avoid overwork too sometimes but I like this so a nice scene I think this is good I won't change too much I could but I actually like the way it looks and obviously I could darken the green and I don't know why it shows up much lighter than it actually is in my painting but I won't I refuse to darken it this is gonna stay like this with a very well lit ground um, but yeah now you will notice that some of these here have a shadow cast by the tree so you don't actually see uh, highlight on them so that's something I can definitely try and get rid of um, just to see if it will improve some of the composition so let's see here let's get rid of them I actually like the way it looks in the original reference photo so I'm gonna do this kind of thing here see how it, it kind of puts them in the shadow of the tree uh, not a must but it looks nice maybe even let's get rid of this one so it's 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 still there but it's very it's much weaker and you can go now over these I actually really like it in in its impressionistic form but you could let's add a bit of this orange uh, you could go and start adding some shadows here or details that you missed earlier right you could do this uh, if you want to get a bit of that shape maybe didn't indicate earlier but overall I really like this one so I hope you enjoyed this one and hopefully you benefited from it. Um, sometimes these processes just click, you get the realism the way you want it to. Sometimes it just doesn't work and that is perfectly fine. I think it has a lot to do with your ability to perceive things and the vision uh, that that are some, uh, some scene or a subject gives you. And if you don't have that vision, if it doesn't inspire you sometimes, it's just, it just won't work. I hope that makes sense. I want to thank you so, so much. Check out my frustration for your watercolor course link in the description box below. I want to thank everyone who supports me over on patreon really really appreciate it you're a big part of what i'm doing if you want to get credits at the end of the videos check that out we'll see you in the next vid until next time take care